Okay, welcome back everyone. Today we are working on DOM manipulation. So we're at this uh, point in the lecture. Uh, then we'll have some open lab time after this uh, to work on today's uh, end of day assignment. So the first one will be video preview. So let's look at what that looks like. Here we have uh, some code for you. We would have built this page already. And then we give you uh, a task here, which is on hovering over this video, you would make this video play. On hovering out of this video, you make this video stop playing. Okay. And look at this other assignment, button clicker. Button clicker says, on click, I want you to make this pop up. Ninja was liked. Whenever you click a, a like here, this like button, you increase, well, you would make this pop up uh, on the page. Ninja was liked. When you remove the add definition button, when you click it, it will it will remove that button. So this is the before, before it's clicked. If we click it, then it's gone. We have a div with empty space here, no button. Lastly, when we click this login button here, we want it to say log out. So when we click login, it will change. Okay, so we have a lot of different rules as you can see how many different rules we have one that would change login to log out remove add this pop-up um we have the other video assignment that would make a video pause or play depending on if our mouse is hovered over that screen area okay all of this has to do with now manipulating the page we're taking javascript and we're applying it to our HTML page so that when we do something on our HTML page, it will react in the way that we're asking it to. When we set that parameter for how it should react in JavaScript. Okay, so now we're incorporating JavaScript into the document object model. So, um, let's go ahead and dive into the lecture. So I'm going to be going over some of the content that I uh, did on Friday, but I'm going to just do it for the sake of clarity, for the sake of reiterating so that we understand. All right. When a user visits our website, they are presented with information in our HTML with a look and feel shaped by our CSS, right? So our HTML is our skeleton, CSS put some color, like it would be the clothes on the skeleton. And in order to interact with our website, we will need to provide the user with elements they can click, elements they can scroll or swipe, and forms they can fill out, okay? We don't just want this skeleton to be clothed now. We want it to like, you know, when you hit it with that little hammer on the knee, you want it to react. You want it to leg to kick up. Um, so as the programmer, we have no way of knowing beforehand how long it will take a user to fill out a form exactly when a user might click a button. So we need to write code that can react to the user. We can do this through events. Okay. The simplest event we can uh, react to is the on click event. Okay. We're going to be using this a lot on click, which is triggered by a user left clicking their mouse or tapping on a touch screen mm -hmm. over the element. So clicking or tapping on the element. So if we create this button here, it says in the button, in the opening tag, not the closing tag, but in the opening tag, we say on click equals, and then in this quotations area, we now add our function. So let's go ahead and break this down. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder here. I'm gonna say uh, DOM 
inside our DOM folder, we're going to have an index.html and a script.js. Okay. So we have our HTML file. And we want to now link the script.js to this HTML file. So how do we do this? We say script colon src. Now it's looking for a file path location. So I'll give it the location of uh, what we're working in. So we say script.js. Script.js is the name of our script file here. The script.js here, as long as they're in the same folder, this one I called, let me rename it. Uh, as long as they're in the same folder, call this one the DOM folder, because that's what we're learning today about the DOM. Then this here, this script tag is going to be linked to this file, script.js. We know this, right? So let's let's give, I'm going to go through this lesson slowly, make sure we understand every single point. And I'll try to cover this poll as maybe annoying today, but I'm going to try to check in with you guys to make sure you get this because this lecture is super important. So just the way that we would have linked our CSS here in the head, okay? Link CSS. You know how we would find our CSS file through linking it in the head and Nate in and saying in this href, the name of our CSS file. So in this case, if I wanted to create a CSS file, I would say uh, style.css. Okay. And now because this style.css file is in the same folder as the index.html, this is going to locate it. I'm doing the exact same thing with this script tag, except now the script tag is at the bottom of the body. Okay. We want to remember we keep this we keep the script tag at the bottom of the body instead of in the head somewhere where the um link to the CSS is. Now the script is at the bottom of the body. Okay. So here it is at the bottom of the body. And now, whenever we write some code on our page, we should expect to see it in our, um, we should expect to see it running as soon as we run our page. So let's say we have a page here that has an H1 that says, hello world. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this in a live server. Here's our page, only one H1 that says, hello world. If I inspect the page and I go to the console, you'll see here it's empty, right? Nothing, nothing done here. This console here is an area where we would see our console logs connected to our page. Remember, this is our special screen area. I want to now test to see that our script tag is connected to our page. So what I'm going to do is console log something here in the script.js file. So I'm going to say console log, hello. And now you see it already here because my live server, as soon as I save, it's going to, it's going to go ahead and change. So now anytime I load this page, I can open this console and see my console log there. As soon as, as soon as this page loads, it connects to the script.js and script.js says you have one job. That job is to console log hello anytime this 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 script.js is run. This script.js is running and it's connected to the HTML and that's why we see a console log hello there. If we add another console log, the job of this file 
is to log all, it's to run through the whole entire page and run every single thing in this page from top to bottom. So now we have one console log that does hello. And on line three, we read through hello world. Okay. Now, what if we want a function to run only when it's called, right? So that's why we encapsulate things in function, in functions here. So we have a function here. We're going to say, we're going to call this function, say hello world. Okay, so here's our function. Now I'm going to take these console logs and I'm going to put them inside this function here. So now, even though this page runs from top to bottom and it's completely connected to our HTML file, it's not going to run these things unless this function is called. Say hello world. All right, so let's go ahead and call this function. So remember how this is a function is, is written. Just because we have defined our function doesn't mean our function is going to run automatically on its own. We need to actually call it. So how do we call it? We say, uh, we call the name, say hello world. And then we put the two parentheses in there. Okay, these two parentheses next to the name is the calling of the function. This is the start button. This is the key in the ignition. This is starting the car. So now when this page reads from top to bottom, it says, okay, you have a function if, all right, so you have some console logs in this function. You just wanted to find it. Okay, line nine, nothing, line 10. Oh, you want me to call this function? Okay, I'll call this function. So then it goes back into the function, does console log hello, and then console logs world. So if we log our page, with this function call, we have our hello world in our console here. Without this function call, if we comment it out, we no longer have hello world in our console. Okay. Now we have it. Now it's gone. No more console log there. Okay. Do we understand that this, this, here that a, a function won't run unless it's called function will not run unless it's called so i'm calling my function as soon as i call it then it will print cons hello world in the console okay so all i'm doing now is is, is saying I'm going to limit this console, these console logs to when this function is called. And depending if I call my function or not, is whether it's going to appear in the console. All right. So we've got this. We understand how this works. Now, what we want to do is we want to now make this function call. We, we want this function to run, but only when we say so now, not just not just when the document loads, when that's called that that's that's good, but we want it to be specific. OK, we want it to be specific. To when we actually do something on the page. OK, so we're, now we're going to make a button. OK, we're going to copy this button here. And we're going to remove what's on in the on click. In this on click, I'm going to take this function call now. I'm going to I'm taking it from my script.js and I'm putting it inside the on click. Okay. Now I'm going to invoke the function every time I click this button. Okay, it's going to log hello world. This function call is going to run every time we press the start button. Now we've linked the start button, the key in the ignition, to an actual button on the page. Now our actual button on the page, here it is. 
So let's go ahead and inspect our console. It's empty. But as we can see here, we've said, but on click, call this function. So now if we click it, there's our console logs. Hello in the world, two console logs. If we click it again, there it is again. It'll keep logging hello world for as many times as I click the button, okay? Let's, let's give some feedback on how well we're understanding how now I connected the HTML to the JavaScript, the calling of the function to that on click. All I did was cut it from the right, took it from JavaScript and pasted it in the on click. Okay, this is when I say linking JavaScript to the HTML, this is one example of what I mean. Our JavaScript is linked to our HTML through the script tag. And now we can run function calls in our HTML through taking that function call itself and adding it to the on click. So I can make this do whatever I want now. I can say, console log, whatever, okay? So now it will console log the word whatever, as many times as I ask, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21. So our function call is now linked in our HTML. Now that we understand this, we can call functions in our HTML, we can understand the rest of the lecture. That's all we really need to understand. The rest is just details, okay? We have our function on the right. We call our function now through a on click, okay? In this example here, this alert, there, there is now a way, let's, let's delete our call to our function here. Let's do what, what the platform tells us now, it says, now on this on click of this button, I want you to alert. And in this alert, I want you to say the string, the string of hello. As you can see, the, the outside is double quote and the inside is single quote. That's because if I make the inside single quote, I mean, I'm sorry, if I make the inside double quote, there will be this confusion here, okay? So it doesn't matter what you use, single or double quote, as long as you are making them uh, different there. So the outside can be single if the inside is double, vice versa, the inside can be single if the outside is double. You have to make them, make them different, okay? But in this case, we have a string in the single quote now inside the alert. So what does this alert do? Okay. It brings a pop-up on the top of our page, this little box area. And inside this, we have our message, hello, in this alert. So an alert is an inbuilt JavaScript function. We, we're, now we're not actually calling anything on the right side of our page, right? There's, there's no function in our JavaScript that's making this alert pop up on our screen with this alert hello. But this is still an inbuilt JavaScript function that's able to be recognized solely in the HTML. Now we can make it linked to our function here, okay? We can make it linked, what we'll do is we'll make it call our function. Our function is say hello world, okay? That's our function. What if now we put the alert on the right side? So we say hello here. 
hello, we'll make it say hello world. Now we have an alert inside of our say hello world function. This now invokes our say hello world function. Let's see what happens now. The same exact thing, same exact thing happens. We've now just put the alert, this inbuilt JavaScript function alert. So you can't make a function called alert. There's already one called alert. All right, so you can't, you couldn't make this function alert. Don't do it, it's just gonna be bad practice. Okay, make this a unique name. And if you wanna call an alert, you can also call it this way. Instead of putting it directly onto the on click, you can say, say hello world. And you can also make it console log something. So you can make it do two things at once. Uh, hello world. So now if we inspect our console, when we click this, it'll pop up an alert at the top of the page saying hello world and it'll console log. As soon as we click the okay on the alert, it'll console log hello world as well. So you can do a lot of things in one function call. Okay, so we have our function call there. Um, let's make sure, do we understand how the alert works? Okay, do we understand how this alert works? That we can call it as its own function in the HTML or we can link it to a function on our JavaScript and call that function specifically. Um, I have a random question. Um, yeah. What if in the HTML you have the alert and then in the, in per, and then you, so you see how you have say hello world. What if you had alert on the outside? Well, you alert and then you say hello in the parentheses. Would that yeah, still can, work? Yep, it will still work. So you can take this here. And replace this so, all together. So instead of uh, the hello world that you have in the parentheses, you call the function. Can you still do that or not? Instead of this here? Yeah. You call the function? That Okay, so we say, say, hello world like this. You want to call the function in here? Yeah. This is going to alert. Okay, this, this will be interesting. Oh, it works too. Oh, but it's then it gives us function. undefined. Yeah. Wait, what's happening? So it does it the first time and then the second time? It, it's, it's, it calls a function, but it's also calling the value. It's saying, alert us to what this function is. If you give it a return, I think this would fix it. See now, it it's the return I'm giving a value to the function itself right now say hello world is equal to the string hi okay and that's what I'm alerting inside here it's okay. unnecessary to do it this way but now you know if you're if you're going to alert an actual function and you want to give that function a value this is how you give a function a value by giving it a return but that's not the right way to do it we either want to call an alert itself specific or call a function that will call an alert. Okay. Okay. Good questions. All right. So we have our hello world call here. So far we're doing good on the survey check. So let's go ahead and go on to the next here. So we have a function, a custom function. We've linked our script tag. We've already learned how to do this. We already learned how to do this. So we don't need to go over this material. Okay. Now we need to go over what the keyword this means. Okay. There is a keyword called this now. Okay. So let's see what this is. So 
in this button, I'm going to copy this button here. I'm going to replace everything on my page. Oops, I don't think I did that right. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. So what we have on the left is a button. It says on click, call this function example and pass in as a parameter this, right? Let's, let's ignore here the left for just a second. We know that a function call has this parameter section. So if we call this function right now, if we say example, and we pass in five, five element will be, when we call this function, element will receive this value that we pass in, right? Five will go to element and we'll say console log element clicked um, and then the element. So let's see this in action. So we have our, let's go to our console here. Element clicked is five. Why is that? Is because this word element is a placeholder for whatever value I pass in when I call the function. Okay. Do we understand how when I called element, and I asked the console log, this element clicked. When I pass in this five, it passed in through this, this element where it is a placeholder for whatever value I would give it. So if I give it like six now, we're gonna say element clicked is six, console log element clicked, and then the element, which is what I pass in six, which when it passes through here, anything in the function, you can reference to that placeholder, okay? Let's make sure we understand how this works. Something like this, what I have on the right-hand side of the screen. Okay. All I'm doing here is creating a function. We've been doing this the whole time. We have, we have our functions. Okay, we have our function uh, example. We have this section here. This is the parameters. We have the do something section here, do something. And then we have our function call. Okay, so if I pass in five here, if I type in para for parameter and I say console log, para, whatever I pass in here will go to para. Then whenever I say para, it'll equal what I entered here. Okay, so whatever value I give in the function call itself will pass in to the parameters and that parameter gets the value. Okay, this is something we've been doing since programming basics. So there's no excuse to not understand this now. If you don't understand this, there's some uh, catching up you need to do as far as JavaScript. So don't be shy to ask. I don't get how function calls work. I don't get how parameters work, okay? In this case, we're just calling this function, we're making it run, and we're giving this value to our parameter here. And now we can use that as a placeholder for whatever value we can call our function with, okay? Seven, eight, nine, whatever we call it with will be given to para for parameter. Okay, same thing going on here. This element is a placeholder for whatever we call. So if we say example at nine, the first time it's called, it'll say element clicked six. And the second time it's called element clicked is nine. Okay, so we've done that. Let's go ahead and delete these. 
let's put our button back in order here. What I want to do now is explain what this is, okay? Because we know that this button click on click will call our function example, and it will pass in this, okay? It will pass in this to the element. So now when we console log element clicked and it passes this element, whatever this is, it's gonna get passed to element. So let's see what it is. Okay, element clicked. This whole entire button now is console logged. Instead of that number that I gave it, the whole entire button is console logged because I gave that as the parameter. So what is this referring to? This is referring to the button itself. As you can see here, it says on click example of this, and then it has a click me. What if we go ahead and change something here? Click me, uh, make it click me please, okay? So now this button says, click me please. If I click it, we see in the console, button on click example, we have the click me please here. So we've console logged this button itself. We've console logged an HTML element. And that's because this passes in whatever it's referring to when it's being passed in. So if I say console log this, or if I pass in this, I'm passing in the button itself. The button itself is now being passed into the function. <clears throat> okay, so that is what is happening whenever you, you use the word this. Okay, so um, let's read here. The power of this is that we can use JavaScript to read the power of this is that we can use JavaScript to read the content of the element or even manipulate it if we like. There are a number of things we can do to manipulate the element, like changing its style or changing its content. Text is the most common thing we can uh, do to manipulate something when we pass in this. So now that we have <clears throat> a way of passing in our button. Now that we have a way of saying, okay, I want this function that I'm calling here on the right to pass in this, whatever this is, okay? Right now, it's this button, okay? It doesn't always have to be a button. You can make an on-click, you can, let's, let's attach this to the H1, okay? Let's now if you click this H1, it will call this this um, function that takes in an element, console logs that string element clicked, and then the element. And that function also receives this, whatever this this is. In this case, when we click the H1, what will we see in the console if we if we click the H1 here? What should we see? Anyone have a guess? Doesn't have to be right. Let's just have a guess. Hello world. Okay. Yeah. We'll get an element of our H1 here. This H1 was clicked when we when we clicked it. And so now when it passes this, it passes what it's referring to in the moment it was clicked. When I clicked the H1, it was referring to itself. So this H1 got console logged. If we click this button, this is referring to the button that was clicked when this was passed in through the function call. If I click the button, it'll console log the button. If I click the H1, this will refer to the H1. Okay, so this is referring to whatever it's attached to at that moment. So in this case here, 
in the case we're on now, if we pass in what we're working on, we can now manipulate it. Okay, so let's take these three buttons now. All right, let's let's take these three buttons. Let's put them here. Let's take this function and replace the function we have with it. Okay. So on our button here, we say we 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 see here on click. It calls this function turn off. And it passes this. So it's passing in this button whenever we call this function. So what does this function do? Okay, it receives this, that button, by that parameter element. And then it says that element, which is that button, dot inner text. So now this is something we've seen that's new. Dot inner text. What could that be doing? Okay. What this inner text does is accesses the inner text of whatever we're passing in. So in this case, we're passing in this. So it means this button. When we pass in this button, we can receive that button by parameter and saying that button, which is being referred to by this passed in through element, dot inner text I, I that inner text of that button I want it to be off I want it to be off so before this button that button's name was on but now we can make it equal to off so let's go ahead and see our document we here we have our three buttons right three on buttons so now if I click this button I can change the inner text, okay? I change the inner text on this button now to off. I can change this one to off, okay? They only switch to off because that's what I made my function do. My function only takes the inner text of the element that's being passed in through this, and then it turns that text to whatever it is to off. So it can say banana. And then A and A. Um, tree. It can be anything. Okay. But my function is going to take that inner text of whatever this is passed through in that element and it will turn it to off. That's what my function does. It takes the inner text of the of whatever content that's being passed in, it takes that inner text and turns it to off. Okay, I can apply this to an H1 as well. So let's say H1, hello world. Okay, I'll take this on click. I'll pass it through this H1. Oops, sorry. Pass it through this H1's opening tag. So now if I click hello world, what should happen? It'll just become off. Right, because that's what my function does. It just takes in whatever I pass in through this into that element, and it says, "Okay, take that thing, whatever this is attached to, that anchor, this, and then turn the inner text of that thing to off." So they're all off now. So. On the right side there, instead of putting off, could you, instead of making that a string, could you have it be a number um, or or a variable, or preferably a variable, I guess? Okay, let's start with the number. Let's start with the number. So now I'm saying make the inner text equal to this number five. See how that worked? Whatever is passed in through this, if I click now, anything I ask it, it's going to take that inner text and turn it to five. Now you said a variable as well. Let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, want, like if you're building a social media page with likes, you want it to show how many likes it has. You know what sure. I'm saying? Yeah. So for example, let's do something simple. We have a variable called um 
I don't know, call it uh, dog, okay? Dog equals woof. I don't know. I'm just making this variable dog equals something. So when I switch this to dog now, make the inner text equal the value of dog. Now it will change it to the value of that dog. The value is woof. So anytime we change the element dot inner text, we're changing it to that variable's value. That hey Josh, can can you refresh your web page again? Okay, and then click it. Oh, okay, okay. I see. I see. I think that I think does the uh the parameter have to uh, yeah the parameter for turn off does it have to be named element? Is that like nope, it can function? be anything. anything. It can be okay. anything. Let's gotcha. call it um cat. Okay. Element is just a good name. A good placeholder name. So mm -hmm. let's so we're we're same function now we're just calling element cat mm -hmm. still works exactly the same doesn't and matter what you call the placeholder and so the importance of this is basically just so that you don't have to like you have like a bunch of different functions a bunch of different on clicks or whatever you don't have to call each individual parameter you might have them doing different things you can just say this and just call the function yeah, this is a sort of an anchor. This anchor attaches to whatever it is currently attached to. So for this one here, this this on line 13 is attached to this whole entire button. So it's going to bring with it that whole entire button. So when we pass it in through this function, which right now we're saying we're expecting something called cat, it's actually going to receive this button. Okay, so let's switch it back to element so it makes more sense. This is just a placeholder, so it'll work with anything, but element is what it's receiving. It's receiving this element on the page. Could you could you show that with like a, like a different function element, one that, that maybe says something different but still has this okay. in it so we can see that? Yep, yeah. yeah. so I'll make a, another button here. I'll call this um, super button. Okay, whenever I whenever I click my super button, I want it to call my super function. So I'll create a function here called super function. Okay. Now on click of this button, call my function. So we've called the function super function. So we have to invoke it here, super function. Okay, the super function is gonna be called here now. So if we console log, hello, we should see hello in the console. Here's our super button. There it is, hello in the console. And we wanted to do what we've been doing with the other one. So what we'll do now is we'll write something so that we can receive this, right? So we'll write element. Okay. Now the receiver can receive something. This function can receive something and re reference it in its do something section. So we're going to receive it. Whatever we receive, we're going to convert that inner text of that thing to equal um, hot dog. Okay. We just want to change whatever we receive, that inner text of that thing that we receive, we're going to just make it equal to hot dog. Okay. So now we need to pass. So now we need to make this function give this button so that it can receive it as an element 
and then change its inner text. Because right now, if we just click this button, it's asking us to change the inner text of something, but it doesn't know of what. It doesn't know what it's wanting us to change. So I have to give it something so that it can change the inner text of that thing. In this case, I'm saying this. So it's referring to its self, this whole button now. It's going to receive this button. If you want me to prove it, I'll say console.log element. So here's our element. And now it's changed to hot dog. So before it was the super button, right? As soon as I click it, I can pass it through the function will work so fast that when I say console log it, it'll console log the button with the new name that we've given it because we've changed the inner text to hot dog. So if you were to, um, do you go back to the HTML real quick? If you were to, let's say, say super function and the parameter instead of saying this, you typed in element knowing that in the JavaScript, you have two different functions with the parameter element. Would there be like an error or confusion? Okay. Yes, because element doesn't actually refer to anything. This, this, is just, this is just an open glove ready to receive whatever we pass through, okay? Mm. This is the thing uh, that we pass yeah. itself. So in this case, it's mm -hmm. like we're throwing a glove to a glove it, it, it's gonna you're gonna receive it let's see what happens okay it's gonna say element is not defined what is this Who, who's talking in the background here i think it's your background tell me sorry um it's throwing me off um so in this case when we say receive this element the console is going to say i don't know what element I don't know what element you're talking about. It's not defined. So element is just a word in this case. The, there has to be a keyword called this. This is a, is a special word in JavaScript that will refer to whatever it's attached to. In this case, it's attached to this button. So this special word, this, will be passed into this receiver which is it can be called anything but in this case we've called it element so that we know what we're receiving okay let's do a, a quick poll check to make sure we're all still here okay i need you guys all to be with me this whole entire hour i know we've gone over the hour already but we're going to just keep going until we cover as much content as, as possible today. Okay, cool. So we- Hey Josh. Yes. Real quick, sorry. Hey, uh, so as long as your, was it class name? Yeah, as long as your class is like the same as your function, it'll, it'll just call it out, right? And in your um, JavaScript. So you're like the words in blue, the functions. Yeah, this is the, right. So this is, remember, this is called a function, right? This is called a function invocation. This is the call of the function. Okay, function invocation. That's the word I was looking for. I'm sorry. Yes. It's yeah, okay. that's, yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay, so yes, as long as it's the same, it's, with the parentheses, you can call that function that you're asking and pass in whatever you're telling it, right? If I give, for example, in, instead of this, if I give it the number five, it's going to call this function when it's clicked. It'll give five to the element. It'll console log five, and then we'll say five dot inner text equals hot dog. At this line, line eight, it's going to say, wait a minute. Five's inner text. What is what is five? Is there anything on your page that I can identify as five and change the inner text? No. There's nothing on our page. We just have H1s and buttons. 
at this point on our page. There's nothing on our page called five. Five is just a number. So you can't change five's inner text. It's like asking what's what's the shape of orange? Well, okay, that's that's maybe what's the shape of yellow? It's like, well, yellow is a color, it's not a shape. So what you're asking me to answer doesn't make sense. In this case, that's what it's saying. It's saying if I just if I just pass in five, you'll see it will console log five. But when you're asking it to change five's inner text, it's gonna say, hold on a second, wait, what do you mean? five's inner text. Five is just a number. How do you expect me to change a number's inner text? If you want me to access something on the document, you have to give me that thing in the document itself. So that's why we pass in the word this. This passes in the button itself. So now that when we have access to that button, we'll console log that button. And we'll also say, okay, that button's inner text now I want you to change it to hot dog. Okay, I know how to do that. I can add, I can change the inner text of a button. The button has some inner text and it comes with that, super, that inner text super button. Okay, but if I just pass in anything without the word this, we can't expect our function to change that thing unless it's changeable. All right, so we have how this works. So now let's let's do something a little more. All right, so let's 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 go back to our buttons. Okay. I have um a way to change the inner text from on to off. Right? We just have three buttons now that work the way that we say originally. Turn from on to off. It doesn't matter how many times I click it, it'll stay off because that's all our function does. What if I wanted to make our function switch it back to on? How would we do that? Any ideas, anybody? Sorry, say that again. What if we wanted to? See how when we click this on button, it goes to off. What if we wanted to click it again to make it go back to on? How would we do that? Uh, if statement. Yes, sir. So we need an if statement to check, okay, is the button on? Then turn it off. If the button's off, then turn it back on. So we have if element dot inner text is it equal to on so wouldn't it be just like that a flashlight thing we did way back in exactly like exactly like the flashlight so now we're we're asking is the inner text on then make it off else Okay, if it's not on, if it's off, else, then make it element.innerText to be on. So now let's see what happens. On, off, on, off, on. Now this will change because we have an if statement. And if statement's always going to check, is the element.innerText, is it equal to on? Okay, therefore, if it is, turn it off. Else, in every other situation that it's not on, okay, and the only other situation that it's not on is if it's off, okay? So this is saying if element.innerText is anything but on, off, then change it to on. Okay, so that's how we're able to get our buttons to switch. Okay, let's do status check on this one. Do you understand how we made an if statement inside our function that receives that same button and is able to turn it from on to off 
and from off to on. The best way for you to understand this, not the keyword this, but this whole thing that I'm doing, the best way for you to, and, and the keyword this, the best way to understand anything is to do it yourself, okay? So reference this video or check out the code that I'll be posting. Okay, this is the on off button now. We have an on off button that we can create on our web page. So we also can do something else. We can do something else with our functions. Let's create a let's create a new button. Okay, let's 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 create something else here. We're gonna create a I'm just gonna take this button. Add it in. Let's remove this. And let's remove this and replace it with uh, hide me. Okay. This button wants you to hide it. So if I click it, it doesn't do anything now. But if I call a function that will make it do something, then we'll see how we can make this be hidden now. All right. So we have this function that we'll copy called hide. And this is going to receive the element of the page and say that element dot remove. This is another inbuilt function in JavaScript, but we want it to work now when we call this function hide. So now what do we need to do? We need to link our function call on the left. We're going to say hide and pass in this, the button itself. So if I say, take in this button and call this function with uh, the button that I'm referring to, this button, okay? It's gonna receive it and it's gonna do a dot remove on it. So let's see what that looks like now. Now it's gone, okay? So now we can make things in our page disappear. Imagine if we had a way to let's say let's say this this button here says allow for cookies to be checked or something okay let's say you have a big button in the middle of your page that you want the users to acknowledge and allow for cookies to be checked so then you can click it once you click it, you're done with it. It's out of the way. It's gone. Element.remove has removed it. Okay, so now we have all that we need in order to do this assignment. We have the way to make an alert pop up. We've gone over that. We can remove this add definition button. We can remove this as well. And we can also um, change text from off to on. Instead of the off to on, we can make it go from log out to log in. Okay, log out to log in. Okay, and actually, you know what? I think what I'm going to do today is, is split this information. Uh, there's a lot of document object model information here, okay? The only way to manipulate something, there's not only one way to do it, not just through using this. There's more than one way. So I'm going to split the content on this page, save a little bit more for the afternoon lecture. Okay, so let's go over one more thing. The hover event. Okay, so we have a div. Instead of on click on the div, we have on mouse over and on mouse out. Okay, so let's let's copy this div. We have this div on mouse over, on mouse out. 
Okay, it needs some styling to it. So I'll take this style and I'll add it to our CSS. Okay, and now I have this function alert. It's just gonna alert the string mouse over and it's gonna alert mouse out. Okay, these functions are gonna be called on mouse over, it's gonna call this function over and then this function calls this alert. So let's go ahead and call this here. Okay, on mouse over, on mouse out. As soon as I hover over, we get an alert. As soon as I'm out of that area, we get an alert. Okay, so let's see how well we understood this here. Okay. And at this point, I'm going to end the lecture so I don't overwhelm you guys with information. We're going to go over a lot more information this afternoon. But for now, we need to quit and let you guys put this into practice in order to solidify this information. Okay, I don't want to go any further. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, so today we have video preview and button clicker. Those are the end of the day goals. I've already explained video Preview is on mouse over. You want the video to start and on mouse out, the video to stop. Button clicker, we want certain elements to disappear if we click them. We want an alert to pop up if we click it. We want the logout to turn to log in if we click it, okay? And the homework for tomorrow morning is changing HTML and CSS, JS objects, query selector, input, and change timeout, okay? So don't worry so much about the homework get this end of day assignments done these are super important okay so we'll go over more dom manipulation at two and then we'll do a breakout session where we work on this morning's code to create something uh using javascript and html okay so um does anyone have any questions then Okay. All right, then let's go ahead and get into our breakout rooms.